Hey guys, Scott here, and we're going to be doing another installment of Scott's Thoughts. So, if you didn't see episode one, that's going to be right up here. You can go ahead and click that. I talked about the economy and automation and jobs and Cadillac and robots. It was really cool. All right, so for this video, I want to talk about the sort of thing that I talked with my students today, actually. So, uh, one thing that I do for my students on Fridays is that I have a, a sort of fun discussion about science and technology and popular science, uh, all, all kinds of good stuff on Fridays. So I usually go through the news and I pick out uh, recent discoveries or recent uh, news in the science world, in current events, stuff like that. So today, because it was the first Friday of the school year, I talked to them about the value of a scientific approach to life and a view of having a scientific view of things, namely the value of objectivity, empiricism, and of the scientific method, not just in terms of just, you know, research and science, but also in uh, how you approach and look at the world. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, empiricism. Empiricism is of an empirical nature, empirical meaning empirical data. So empirical data is data that is quantifiable, stuff that you can measure, stuff that you can compare against a metric, stuff like that. So let's say you have um, a water bottle, okay? And you want to quantify how much, um, how much liquid you have in that bottle. You can measure it, you can record how much it is, let's say it's half a liter or whatever, and you can then uh, take that data, you can create a data set from it, and that is your empirical data. It's what you use in order to prove how much liquid you have in that bottle. Okay, so that's just an example. Um, a reliance on empirical data helps prove case your case and helps uh, get you closer toward the actual truth. Along the same lines, having an objective way of looking at the world is very important. The difference between subjective and objective is uh, when you're objective or an objective thinker or an, an objective analyst, you're able to remove your bias and look at something from an outside perspective, free of your own personal uh, biases. So the example that I gave to my class is I had people raise their hands, in, of course, in terms of U.S. politics. I said, who looks at the world through a Republican lens? Who looks at the world through a Democrat lens? And so the point wasn't to, like, get a number between the two, but the point was to show that there are, t you know, two ways of looking at social issues in the United States for a majority of people. Um, so my, my point was that if you are going to look at the world through a Republican lens, you have an inherent bias towards something and towards certain social issues. And if you look through the world through a Democrat lens, you're going to have a bias to uh, way of looking at some social issues. So in order to be an objective analyst, say if you wanted to be a social scientist, you would need to be able to set aside those biases. Like for Republicans, it would be everything needs to be low taxes or whatever. So you, you set that aside and you take a look at what the data says, the empirical data, and you follow the numbers no matter where they go. And if you're able to do that, you will be an objective thinker, an objective analyst. And that is true all across you know, the board, no matter what you're talking about, if it's politics, whether you're a uh, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Green, whatever, or if you're in another country, one of your political parties or ways of thinking, uh, if it's in science, it's uh, your preconceived notions need to be set aside, your biases, so that you are able to do good research and follow just the numbers. And this is applicable in all areas of life, I would say. So, having a, uh, a, a, a good reliance on empiricism and on Evidence and logic and reason is very important. Um, and, of course, lastly, the scientific method. So the scientific method is very valuable. It takes both um, empiricism and objectivity and combines them together into a process by which we are able to look for and ascertain the truth. And it's not rigid. Of course, things change over time. That's why you value empirical data, because your empirical data can change. It can show change over time, and you are open to change. So it's very important in that regard. But the scientific method is very important, and it's a good way of looking at the world in general. You know, follow that process. Remove variables. Test things. Look at things with an objective lens so that you can arrive at conclusions best. 
And so the scientific method in general, just as a, as a basic history, is very important. In the last 400 years, we have had an enormous leap in knowledge, in freedom, in technological process, or progress rather, and it's been phenomenal. And it's only been brought on because of the change in thinking that instead of trying to convince people of a certain worldview, you instead go out in searching for the truth, removing your biases and being objective. And that is the true um, legacy of the scientific revolution. So this, the scientific method is very important for arriving at um, interpreting data, collecting data, and doing objective analysis. And so the point that I made to my class is in the ancient world, there were, there were basically two major uh, libraries that were considered to be some of the best in antiquity. One was the uh, library the Hellenistic Greeks had in Alexandria, Egypt. It was considered to be one of the greatest libraries of the ancient world. And then, of course, there was the Great Library of Baghdad, which was um, destroyed by the Mongols uh, way back when. But both of those were the greatest depositories of human knowledge of their time. And the point that I made was that uh, these, these different uh, time periods, knowledge was so valued and, and, and so revered that instead of uh, when, when places were conquered, instead of burning and destroying things, they would find the books, and they would copy the books, and then they would put those copies into the library for... Uh, the preservation of knowledge and so the, the the thing is that these libraries were not open to just anyone only to the political elite to the scholars stuff like that so the point that I made about the value of the scientific method and of objectivity and empiricism is that the introduction of the scientific method led to the previous 400 years we've had of technological revolution including enormous leaps and bounds made in the, la in the 20th century into the 21st century. So I gave the example of uh, smartphones. So this is a Galaxy S4. It's a very good phone. I very much enjoy using it. It's got a 4G connection to the internet wherever I have signal. And it's, uh, it's a huge improvement over what the first cell phone that I had. My first cell phone was only able to make calls, do text messages, and it had a color screen. That was actually the selling point of it. So <laughs> the, 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 even the technological change between uh, 10 years ago and now is pretty astounding. But the point that I want to make, tying this into the scientific method to the ancient libraries, is that today, thanks to the scientific revolution, thanks to technological process made possible through objective research, we have gone to a point where instead of being locked out of knowledge because of your station in life, uh, like you would have been in the ancient world, not having access to that vast treasure trove of knowledge, today you have a device in your pocket if you uh, have one of these, if you have a connection, you are able to access the collective knowledge of the entire human species. And to me, this is really awesome. It just blows my mind. If I get on here, I can find any information I want. I can research any scientific topic. I can pull up any research paper. I can, I can look up any sort of topic I want and get information about it, accurate information, instantly. And the amount of information is many times orders, many orders of magnitude greater than all of the information that was contained in both of those libraries. And anyone can get that information. That's amazing. The internet is amazing. Technology is amazing. And you know what? None of it would have been possible without rigorous empiricism, objectivity, and the scientific method. So that's why it's important in a global sense. And if you're able to develop an objective way of looking at things in your personal life, you're going to be able to ascertain truth a lot easier. So anyway, that's what I want to leave you with today. That's the talk that I had with my students today. So I hope you enjoyed it, this second episode of Scott's Thoughts. And hopefully I'll have more for you guys soon. So if you like today's video, feel free to click the like button. Be sure to subscribe for more. I got lots of good content for you, so stay tuned. Thanks again. Bye, guys.